That is like a very huge and diverse country full of beautiful uh, landscapes and many cultures, many uh, super technological cities. And uh, I guess that's something that the internet won't tell you. Well, Nanyang does, actually. Okay, so uh, I think probably if you look it up exactly, then the internet will tell you. But uh, some one thing that most people don't know is that um, if you go to my country and you order something, you might get it wrong because uh, they will ask you do you want it and you will say kind of yes in your language but it will mean no in my language so we kind of nod for no and shake our head for yes. <laughs> One thing that you will not find commonly is um, something called Sebastianismo. It's like we had, because of a secession crisis, a really young king named Don Sebastian. He was like 15 or 14 or something. He was really cocky and he wanted to go and he thought he could just conquer north of Africa. No, we couldn't. He died there. All our military forces died there. You can eat like uh, tacos of 20 pesos because probably it's gonna be a cat or different animal than the cow. That's it. Um, I think it's chicken food. Maybe you want to like some this strange transparent egg from chicken egg. It's transparent and it's one of the most disgusting food that people think. <laughs> Actually, I guess everything that people will see in our food wouldn't like to try it because our food looks bad, but it's so delicious. As soon as you try it, you want to eat it all. <laughs> okay, there's... okay, you don't know the food, but I would say hergma, like it's something from the sheep that I don't like, that I really don't like, that all the people like, that's really disgusting. Is it the thing with the legs of the sheep? Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, you don't want to try this? No, it's not good. <laughs> when we eat something from the animal, we eat the whole animal. So we eat also the brain, the bones, everything. Well, it translates into English as, as seagull dropping which is basically an equivalent of tequila because you have like a piece of salami you put some radish on it and some mustard and then you chuck it and afterwards you drink some wheat based alcohol 5% uh, There's a caterpillar called the mopani worm because it um, lives on the mopani tree and it's, it's quite big, it's about the size of my index finger mm -hmm. And it's eaten, it can be eaten um, dried, uh, so raw, after it's been dried, or it can be roasted. It doesn't look particularly pleasant. Um, it, it's not bad, I mean, I'm not a fan, but I think most people would be a bit weirded out by it. There is, but that you have. Okay. It's uh, it's actually a dog. Uh, it's a very ugly dog. Actually, it looks like a big rat. Yeah. Oh, you, I know what you mean. And it's called. Uh, you can correct me. Solo. Solo. Squinkly. Squinkly. Solo. Squinkly. In Tijuana. Yes. Santiago. <laughs> You've never heard of me. We used to have bears and lenses. Uh, lens, lens? That cat with the pointy ears. Lynx. Pikachu. Yeah, Pikachu, we have Pikachus. <laughs> yeah, first there is a giant uh, serpent, the pen, uh, snake, which is more, more rare than the panda. Uh, 
but I forgot the name. It's called. Um, uh, I, for, I I know the Chinese name is Mang Shan Lot Toe Snake. Uh, but it's more. It's very rare. And another is uh, I, I'm not sure if you heard of Clouded Leopard. It's very rare and very cute. Uh, it's a leopard, panda, leopard. Yeah. Well, I didn't heard about that mouse <laughs> Well, there's one called tapir. Actually, to me, it's a mix between elephant and a bear. Uh, yes. <laughs> there's uh, an animal called uh, chibuide. Yeah, which is a weird animal. It's sort of like a beaver, but like a mix of a beaver and a big mouse. I don't know. It has like long whiskers. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you've heard of them. But we have camels, actually, which you might not know. We have a massive overpopulation of camels. Wei? Ah, yeah. Wei. Oh, okay. Wei. Okay. We can use Wei to refer to a friend. But Wei means like Wei. Yes, or maybe like yeah, maybe Wei. <laughs> or you can also say Wei for, I don't know. Like a friend, or, or if someone does something wrong, you, do you say uh, way and stuff like that? And you can use it in a lot of ways. <laughs> way. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna explain. So, butter with our language is zibda. Okay, zibda. But we have a bad word, it's like it's apart from that word, butter. I'm not gonna say it, of course, but yeah, it's butter. I didn't know that this word is misunderstood, Sometimes, I but um, what I can say is that we have words in our dialect that in other dialects are misunderstood. Yeah. As an example, we have a word, for us it means married, but for, <laughs> <laughs> but for another um, cultures like in Syria or Palestine, it means something bad. Yeah, really yeah. bad. We like to greet people by saying moin moin, which just means hello. And people always think it comes from good morning. And so when I say moin moin at 10 p.m., people always look very confused or sometimes even answer with good morning. And then look even more confused having said good morning at 10 p.m. Well, it's not one word, but swearing can definitely be misinterpreted. We swear a lot just for emphatic purposes just to emphasize oh, actually there are a lot of jokes about that <laughs> but one of the famous one is the word shir shir is used for water tap it is used for animal lion it is used for milk <laughs> and it is used also for sometimes brave people it's not more it's not exactly a word but it's it's a thing that we do no matter what you say, we have to do this. So is it a yes or is it a no? It can be misleading. Yes. <laughs> Salud. Salud putos. Putos. Salud putos. <laughs> that's, that's a full that's a full time. <laughs> chin chin. Salam. Or salamu alaikum or bye bye. Bye bye? Bye bye. <laughs> Not one bye. One bye doesn't work. Bye bye. Nazdrave. <laughs> Nazdravi. <laughs> we say Nazdrave in our language. It's a Slavic language. So almost two most Slavic languages. It's, it's almost the same word, just with slight differences in the pronunciation. Depends on how, how drunk, yeah, how drunk <laughs> proud slang you want to be. Like, um. Ikea. <laughs> Bos, Tug. Uh, we say Shadefet, which means to your honor. One, two, three. Kampe! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> there are different ways to say it. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Kampe! Saha. Pesalati. Yamas. Cheers.
And actually, there's an astronaut called Mary Castillo Vela that went to outer space. So that's really cool. Oh, and uh, we have Hugo Sanchez, a football, football <laughs> player that conquered Spain. So that's another one. And Chicharito. Right Chicharito. That was, I mean, that's a penalty. That's a penalty. Edit that. Edit that. <laughs> I would, I would not answer this question by a person, but by the country, because I would say the Discovery Times, when we discovered half the world and just basically did all that, it was not one man, it was many. Well, there's a very, very famous pirate who looted the ships from the Hanseatic League and pillaged a lot of cities and killed a few people while doing that. And I think he was very awesome. That's a big one, actually the word way, <laughs> before, that's, that's an insult. You don't call anybody a way. But now, in, in this generation, way is like this guy, for example, it's my way. I don't mind way. Kick. Yeah. That's what? You will never have said way in front of your parents. parents. Or in and now and nobody can say to your parents, hey, way. <laughs> our our dialects. We are losing our dialects. So I guess, if I wanted to be stereotypical, I would uh, say the old generation is a bit like that, like, uh, and the new one is like, we're not going to do anything. So it's just like lethargic. These are stereotypes, although unfortunately I feel as though they're a bit too common. Of course, definitely, because uh, Turkey is a rapidly changing country and culture, and the new generation definitely has different values, different understanding of life, of all people. And it's, uh, it will keep changing in the upcoming days. I think the uh, old generation are uh, very, very conservative. They, they believe in something supernatural and uh, this, those are something we don't believe. Uh, we don't quite believe. Yeah. For example, they believe that women who give their pregnation, uh, no, Women who give their birth to a baby should um, stay in on the bed for at least a month. Ridiculous yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot imagine that. Even now, the women who have that thing should stay in bed. I think there is nothing similar. <laughs> they are totally different. <laughs> Okay, she said that uh, actually there are some some people that's between these two different gaps and they're in the middle, actually they're in middle ages now, or I mean, how can I call it, more than 30 or around 30 and 40, they're very different. No, they're between these two big generations. I think it is similar for all countries. Yeah. Everyone thinks that we use always every day sombrero, but that's not true. We only use it in a, in the parties in September because of the Independence Day, but we don't use it every day, just that day. But here, they know us from our TV series, the, the TV series that we exported to other nations. They meet us, then they understand us, and, and they are shocked that we are not like we are, they, what they see in the TV series that we're part of Czechoslovakia <laughs> and that we are Slovenia. Well, uh, I must say that I don't really like it and most people tell me that I'm Russian. And this is because we use the same script and um, yeah, if you write in Russian, um, well, if I write in my language then most people would say, okay, that's Russian, that's actually not. And um, the Cyrillic alphabet, which both languages use, was actually founded in, in my country. Oh, Cristiano Ronaldo. What's your name? Tiago. Oh, Tiago Silva. He's Brazilian, but okay. For the other Arab nations, they think that we are like open-minded until a point that it's uh, a negative thing. But after all, we are an Arab country. We are Muslims. We have the same religion. And I guess we are good people.
people. <laughs> we we are open minded and I like this. I like it makes you so comfortable and even the people who come from um, foreign countries they feel comfortable in Tunisia. So like uh, European countries, Americans, Asians all over the world they have this idea like in general about Muslims about Arabs like we're people that like bombing other people we like killing we like making wars we like seeing blood this like for example me if they see me with my scarf they will think that my parents forced me to 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 put it like they have those judgment like and when I sit next to someone else and they start asking me they're like oh, Oh my god, seriously, it's like that? You're not forced to put this camera? I was like, no, I chose to put it. No one forced me to. And then like, oh my god, so like, you talk with us, you don't want to kill us, everything is fine. <laughs> oh, so everything is fine. I like you, you like me, we can go and eat with each other. And as you see, she's not with the scarf, I'm with the no, scarf. No, the good thing in Tunisia that, uh, yeah. um, that everybody can choose whatever he wants and every decision is respected as you want. We are Muslims, but you can drink, you can party, you can eat, you can eat. Eat. do whatever you want. Yeah. And you can pray, you can wear the scarf, uh, yeah. as you like, and you're just that. free, that's it. Freedom. <laughs> so, if I went to a German uh, birthday party and like people saw me drinking alcohol, they say, how come, how come that you drink alcohol? And I say, I'm not Muslim. If they saw me after five minutes eating pork, like on a pizza or something, like they ask the same question, how come that, that you eat pork and you come from an Arabic country? So, it can be done. So they are not only uh, Muslim Arabs, they are also Christian Arabs and also other um, religion, uh, religious groups. Whenever people ask um, about visiting the country, they always seem to be a bit skeptical about safety. Um, I think they uh, perceive it to be maybe a bit that there's a lot of violence, which I don't think is a fair assessment. I mean, obviously, you always have to be uh, safe when you travel, but I think people are a bit too afraid. They don't. They, they don't have to be as afraid as as they seem to be. Well, there's actually a, a positive stereotype. Um, People think we're really welcoming and really friendly and that we love to have uh, other people come to our, our country. Um, and I'd like to say that that's true, but unfortunately, it, on the whole, as a, as a nation and, and politically, we're really not there yet. Um, politically, there's an attitude that only, uh, only white people deserve to, to, to be there. Um, and then not, yeah, nobody has, nobody else has the right to come. And I think that's really unfair. Um, there's a phrase that many people use that I really hate, which is "go back to where you come from." Well, <laughs> hey, most of us don't don't come from our country either. We are all immigrants, and uh, even regardless of that, I think people should be should be allowed to to go where they wish. I don't think anybody has more of a right to be somewhere than anybody else. We are uh, not all yoga and reincarnation and gurus. For me the food? The food. I come on the food yeah. also. But the, the weather. weather. Food, the weather. <laughs> the weather, yeah. This weather is like... Shit. Oh, my mama's food. I miss the women, snow, and thunderstorms. I miss um, a lot of things, but uh, the thing that I miss the most is my grandma's uh, spread um, for bread, which we always used to eat as kids. And it's made from grilled paprika and aubergines. Um, probably baked beans and cheddar cheese, I'm gonna say. <laughs> have to say, food, always food. Well, I miss all the Food. <laughs> oh, definitely, I know you are saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. My mom. <laughs> no, everything. Seriously, everything. So, 
like what I missed the most, I was at the doctor and we were a bunch of people, like 12 or uh, 11, and we didn't know each other at all. But then like after 15 minutes, we were all talking about our families, our future, our hopes, our like our past, our country, our, the politics, religion, everything. We were discussing about everything and we didn't even know each other. We were like 20 years old, 40 years old, 80 years old. And we were all together like talking with each other at the same time. And you know, like this makes you feel like the warmth, you know, the warmth of the people. Like it just make. I was like just watching, I was like smiling. Uh, well, I think what we miss the most in our country is the weather. Uh, the, the weather is tropical, it's really warm, so you can use shorts uh, just for every month of the year. So that's the thing we, we miss the most. The sea, the stiff breeze in my hair, which you can see is very short, so it won't flow very nicely, but the salt water in the face. And the sunshine. Food-wise, I miss biltong. Biltong is a sort of dried meat. Um, mostly beef, but um, game meat as well, and pala, kudu. That's, that's the food I miss the most. Food. Mangoes. Mangoes that don't taste like melon. The first time I ate mangoes here, it was in a pre-packed uh, little salad. And actually, I did not know what they were. I thought they were some kind of new strange melon. And I asked somebody and they said, hey, you don't know that? That's mango. I said, that's not mango. <laughs> uh, also, cheddar cheese that doesn't... that's not orange. Uh, lots of varieties of cheddar cheese and here you just have the one and it's very expensive and it's orange. Um, and other, other fruits, fruits that aren't rotten when you first buy them from the supermarket. Bit of a cliche, but I'd say the islands and the sun and the summer. I miss the sea and the spicy food. So we're getting serious now. Okay. So our present now. Some corruption stuff from our country. It's like what everybody, I guess, knows. Traffic. Um, that's it. <laughs> mm. uh, a sentence of two words, Israeli occupation. Yes? Israeli occupation. The politics and the corruption. I don't miss my country for the point that people sometimes don't follow the rules. Like we were standing in line, someone just popped in and stepped in between. And some some that don't follow the traffic lights, some, some don't respect the... Uh, when they drive in the car, they don't respect who are working. That's something chaos. Uh, I don't... But why do you want to answer this kind of question? No, I mean that's... Uh... Power cuts and water cuts. I don't miss the weather. Everybody says they miss the weather for their country. Oh my god, no. It's too hot, it's too humid. I don't like the sticky, humid weather where you're, uh, you're sweating all the time when you're not even doing anything. The stray dogs who will hunt you down and bite you. Tell us. <laughs> uh, we have like this, um, like parties near December, near Christmas. Uh, the name is Posadas. It starts like 12th of December and ends on January the 6th. So it's what, like a long, like a long period of posadas, and they are really, really great. So we we love to dance. So I love our traditional dance, which is called Dabka. And we dance mostly with our legs, and we dance in a row, guys and girls together. <laughs> I'm not a traditional person, so I don't have traditions, I don't... Yeah, just the food, the traditional food, that's... Um, our favorite tradition is in Christmas time. Uh, usually the whole family gets together in every household and makes a traditional dish called ayaka, which is 
like uh, Mexican tamale. It's the most similar thing we can find, but much more complicated because it has many fillings and it's wrapped. So it's a very complicated preparation and it's a great time to get the whole family together. Uh, well, there's a very common tradition in the city where you, you visit the next brothel because it's a very sailorish town. So that's what people used to do. There. We don't have a lot of traditions, but um, around Christmas we, we have some nice traditions, especially uh, my favorite is that everybody, very unenvironmentally friendly, but everybody decorates the, the outside of their houses with a lot of lights and uh, Santa Clauses and lit up candy canes and sleighs and reindeer, uh, not real reindeer, but <laughs> uh, lots, lots of lights and figurines and it's all very colorful and, and, and bright and everybody does something different so it's really nice to, to walk around the streets around Christmas time. I think the Norus, yes, Norus, Norus, yeah. yeah. Uh, here, here we have two weeks of off and it's Tradition, I think, is that uh, in my country we have so many religions and we all celebrate every festival. So we have so many holidays. It's the best. <laughs> so many things. Just if you feel like it, just go along with a group of people that belong there. And if they look like they're having fun, just go along with them and tag along and just drink beer and when you're drunk, doesn't matter, whatever. Uh, try to find, for example, my hometown is Izmir. And it has many different, uh, uh, let's say, peaceful villages, peaceful towns that you can take a visit and just have some good time. The tourist information most likely will tell you about the great mountains and the touristic above ground, probably also skiing. But we also have great caves. Specifically, there are two ice caves that are spectacular in their beauty and depth and wholeness. A tradition of food, for example, uh, dumplings with pork and cabbage. Uh, uh, this is original called Kredlove Przeselo. Uh, Svičkova, this is uh, cream sauce with dumplings and pork also. So, uh, this is the re recommendation for me. It's a food called leblebim oh. and just uh, an advice for people who come to buy leblebim in Tunisia, go to the dirtiest one. Yeah, it's the most delicious. <laughs> the most, seriously, the dirtiest shop of leblebim. Oh kind of the <laughs> most amazing one, definitely. <laughs> go to New Zealand. That's, that's not my country. <laughs> <laughs> it's close by. Uh, I shouldn't say that, but I am not a really nationalistic person, and I'm just saying you shouldn't miss uh, New Zealand when you come to, to our part of the world. It's, it's very beautiful, and so it's more beautiful than my country. Friendly, yeah. happy about everything. Yeah. <laughs> Not gay at all. <laughs> no yet. <laughs> Not yet. And uh, I don't know, very uh, open minded. We love pizza. <laughs> and we also good at finding solutions in the easiest way, cheapest way, and the, in our, the fastest way. In our situation. My hair color and skin color. <laughs> and uh, the fact that, like the ones that once braved the sea and went against all odds and defied gods, I kind of want to be like that. I love tea, I think. Uh, just <laughs> well, for one, uh, we are taught since young to speak three different languages. So I end up with. Uh, um, being able to speak Chinese, English, and also our native language, but really. Food! You like food a lot! <laughs> it's really friendly. That's the most characteristic um, part of, of, of the people in our country. They're very, yeah. very friendly. You, it's really easy to make friends, to, to, to interact with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
very outgoing, very social people. Yes. Yeah. Well, we people from that country have a very dry sense of humor, and we have a very nasal accent, which comes from standing in the wind all day. I would say Belize. I would say Belize. I would like a Caribbean Belize island. Or, 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 or Guatemala. One, I can, I can name you 23 countries. So 23 Arabic countries, but actually I feel we are one nation and we can, we can be one country. Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, Egypt, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Tunisia, uh, Morocco, though it's so far, but yeah. Arabic Union, exactly, <laughs> Arabic world. Well, we only neighbor directly with Spain, then there's Morocco, if you cross the Mediterranean. So I guess I'll just stick with the Atlantic Ocean. We all, we're already married to it, we've been married to the ocean for quite a while. Okay, neighboring, it's not that, like, it's a little bit far, but I would say Syria, Iraq and Palestine, because in cases like those cases, like with refugees and with wars, I would like to have such countries as my neighbor for that they would be able to come to Tunisia. That would be more able to help them. My answer is totally different. I would like Greece, Hawaii. <laughs> Just a beautiful country. <laughs> yeah. Now, all of them, we don't neighbor by land with any country, but uh, everybody around there actually. I'm just for uniting in general. I, I think everybody should be allowed to go where they where they want to. Pakistan. We'd say that in my country everything is open on a Sunday and here everything is closed. You cannot do anything. Yeah, what's up with that? It's really weird that nothing nothing is open. There are many, many, many rules here. I mean, there's a rule for how to walk in the street. That, like you should put the first leg and then the right leg and then put the main. Uh, there's an, there's an 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 where you can do two left and then. Right. Yeah. So if you, if you have two on the street, you have to cross first right and then left. You're you can left. So many rules. Asking this question on the day that I'm about to leave, it's like. I don't know. There were the small things like road stuff and like the broken beer bottles and the people always with the beer in the hands and the language, oh my god, and the fucking gas water. Oh yeah, I know. People here don't know how good they have it. It's Germany's the biggest economy in Europe, so. They don't have anything to worry about because everything is assured for them. They're doing well in every branch. So. What hit me first is the, the second day I had in Aachen. Uh, I was waiting at a bus stop. And there was uh, like, the, the longest bus I've ever seen in my life. Uh, was driven by an old lady. So at that point when I saw that old lady of my mother's age uh, was driving that track, I stopped comparing. I think that the cars were driving on the wrong side of the road and I was just so confusing trying to cross the street and I was like, they're not coming the right way. And the first time I tried to ride a bike here, that was quite interesting. <laughs> the trains here are really on time, um, something that's never happened in my country before. I think the efficiency of everything at home. The thing that I, I, I remember um, the first time I went shopping, uh, having placed my items on the till, having to be really quick when you know the teller, teller scan, scanned the items. Uh, where I'm from, uh, when I used to live there, there was massive inflation, so uh, whenever you paid for something, bills had to be counted, the whole process was very slow and quite laid back and when I came to Germany that was quite a shock. Having to pay for toilets and for water, this is crazy. In my country these are 
definitely free. These are always free. These are necessities of life. How can you make people pay for these things? I, I still don't like that. And later on, um, something that not hit me, but something that uh, I came to realize later on is that everywhere are these kind of safety hazards. Um, like, uh, the, you know, the children's playgrounds are not super safe with safety bars and um, soft paw on the ground and uh, with instructions about how to use the play equipment. Uh, you know, and for example, on, on the road there, so you know, they would dig a hole in the road and just leave it like that for a week or two weeks or a month and uh, they expect you not to step in the hole. They don't put uh, three layers of barricades around it. Um, and it, where I come from, if you would step in that hole, you would you would blame somebody else. You would sue them. You would try to get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of that. And uh, here, if you step in the hole, it's your fault. You didn't look where you're going. And actually, I like that. I think it's much more sensible that you have to look out for yourself a little bit more and not try to blame somebody else all the time for your problems or for your mistakes. Um, wasn't right after I came, but after a little while. It struck me how the Germans are perfectionists and they will only really try something if they're persuaded they will excel at it. They won't try something just for the fun of it. Hmm, I think the first thing is that it is exceptionally clean and the silence can get to you after all the noise and uh, the fact that you drive on the other side of the road and it's so confusing with sight to head. We are from Mexico! We are from Mexico! We are from Italy! We are from Italy! My name is Anas and I'm from Palestine. And I'm Anas and I'm from Austin. My name is Robert and I come from Slovakia. Volám se Robert a pochádzam ze Slovenska. Martina and I'm from Czech Republic. Ja jsem Martina a jsem z České republiky. I am from Portugal, that tiny speck of land at the end of the beginning of Europe. Hola, eu sou Tiago e venho de Portugal. I'm going to start that. 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 We are from China. We are from China. My name is Chiu. My name is Chiu. My country is uh, Malaysia, and uh, in my own language, uh, in Chinese, I am Wajiao Junxian. In Malay, it is uh, Namazaya Junxian. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm Umaima, I'm Nede, and we are from Tunisia. And uh, it's me, Umaima, and I'm Nede, and I'm in Tunis. My name is Ayham, and I come from Syria. And in Arabic, that would be Ana Ayham, it's me, Ayham, but uh, at the uh, my name is Maria Fernanda. Uh, my name is Julio. And we, we are, are from, from Venezuela. Venezuela. Mi nombre es Maria Fernanda. Mi nombre es Julio. Y somos somos Venezuela. de Venezuela. So oh, I'm German, North German to be precise. And my name is Simon. Ich heiße Simon und ich komme aus Norddeutschland. My name is Chieta and I'm from Zimbabwe. My name is Liv and I'm from Australia. Yeah, my name is Liv and I'm from Australia. <laughs> My name is Fardin. My name is Elaga. My name is Ali Reza. We are from Iran. Esna Fardin. Esna Man Elaga. Esna Man Ali Reza. Ma. Ma as Irani. I'm Dimitris and I'm from Greece. Imo Dimitris, keep up the ladder. Yeah. My name is Jishka and I'm from India. Then I'm Jishka here or me India say. Nana has to Jesta, Matinano, India and the Bandiro. Do you want more languages? Yan Jesta, Yan India and the Barundale. No, that's enough. <laughs>